Hello everybody. Um, recently it has uh, come to my attention that some people are a little bit um, confused or wondering about the merit of uh, using pixel shift um, with their cameras. Okay, so what I thought I would do is actually run through um, what I believe pixel shift's true intent is and how it benefits the end user if they choose to use it. Because there's a lot of people I think are confused about pixel shift. I think it's somehow managed to get this kind of tag uh, associated with it that it increases sharpening and I think well it, it does to a certain degree but I don't think that's its strongest um, actual benefit um, I think you need to understand the relationship between noise and uh, sharpening to really kind of appreciate it and I, I always think of pixel shift as being the best uh, use for um, controlling noise um, especially in post-production and having cleaner images overall than their non-pixel shift counterparts so I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible I've just done a little test today to just illustrate what I believe is um, the benefits and and, and just going to show you the differences between pixel shift files and non ones um, I think the important thing to, to remember here is I've just used a still life example and we need to we need to appreciate photography as a, as a as a kind of genre in itself because I don't use pixel shift that much. I just don't see the merit in it in a lot of the photos and things that I do. Um, it's like if you want to have super clean enhanced images, that is the message of, of the photo. That's quite an important component to the image. Um, I don't think that's important in things like uh, portrait and not even or landscape either. Um, I think, you know, how many times have you seen those sort of still life photos of bowls of fruit or something or those macro shots of strawberries and seeing all those pores or, or whatever, you know, uh, that's where pixel shift, I think, really comes to light um, to really kind of control the, and have clean images of things like that. So I don't just put it on any anytime um, I think things like architectural um, it would work really well to give those super clean sharp but um, low ISO uh, very clean noiseless uh, files and it can also do a fantastic job for shadow recovery so if ISO 100 is not an option and you're going up to 400 or 800 pixel shift can be a great way to recover those shadows in some ways I, I think of pixel shift as an alternative to HDR um, if you have a photo where you, you feel as though you're really protecting those highlights and you um I know I'm rattling on here a little bit, but yeah, you've you've got a, a lot of the image um, is underexposed because you've protected those highlights. When you lift the shadows and you introduce a lot of noise, pixel shift can work really well in that instance as well. Okay, so you just have to choose when when to use it and understand its application. So let's dive right in. Okay, um, <clears throat> so here this this setup was just a, a palette that my a kid uses for her art, and I used um. ISO 100, I used the FA77 at F8, um, and here I had a an EV bias of minus 1.3, I think, yes, here it's right, minus 1.3, and that was just to protect the highlights and things like that in the image, so it was well exposed. Now, what I have done is I have adjusted this file um, in Lightroom and just sort of done things like exposure and um, lights and blacks and shadows just to make it a nice image overall. Now this is the pixel shift version version of the image and the next file across is the non pixel shift. So there's a slight difference there. I don't I don't know how well this is going to translate to video to YouTube and things like that, but there's a you know these were all synced so any changes I made to the pixel shift file in Lightroom went across to um, the other files as well. And I used a little kind of gray card to kind of get the color right. Now this shot here and the next one is Again, pixel shift, but I had the ISO at 1600 and I underexposed by minus 5 EV. So this was a very dark picture to begin with. And then I raised the exposure in Lightroom um, to get back to something that was more in line with these previous versions that we just see here and here. And then I did a non pixel shift one as well. Now, I don't know if you can see, but even just that, we've done no noise control, no noise reduction. But the difference between these two is is big already. So this one here is the pixel shift at 1600 minus 5 EV. And this next shot is the non-pixel shift 1600 ISO um, minus 5 EV. So there's a lot more grain here. So I don't know if we can see if we'll zoom in. Um, so there's quite a lot of grain around this hair here. We can zoom in a little bit more. So this is the non-pixel shift shot. And this is the pixel shift shot. 
and so you can see it's a little bit takes a while for my PC to render it. Okay, because I'm just in my thicker albums at the moment. Okay, let's get a little, let's inspect things a little bit more. And here we go. Okay, so what is this? This is a, a Lightroom screen grab of the ISO 100 shot. This file is pixel shift. This one is not. And there's been no sharpening applied to this. So zero sharpening or noise reduction or anything. It's just basic, basic exposure adjustments to both files to be in the same. And we're just zoomed in at 1-1. One, one, okay. And we're at this area here. So we can have a look at this little hair here. And really the biggest difference is, is the details and sharpness look the same. Like uh, it doesn't look like it's much difference around here or the hair, you know. But here's quite a big difference. You probably can't see it, but it's a lot noisier in this shadow dark bokeh area than in the pixel shift one okay that's the that's the first thing you need to understand is those out of focus areas on the pixel shift file are, tend to be a lot dreamier and and cleaner and with less noise and this is again that iso 100 remember um now exposure wise i think this did take a, a second yeah a quarter of a second okay and to f f8 for this shot so you know the longer you open the the camera up for the noise it can get as well so bear that in mind um let's have a look at the next image so this is a pixel shift shot iso 100 with the details off. So in Lightroom, I just hit the details off tab. Okay. Now this is, I just did this. You should, you should also realize that when you do this, it looks worse than if you just had it on with nothing adjusted because Lightroom as default will have your sharpening value at 40. Whereas by turning this off, I've effectively put, put the sharpen to zero. Okay. So just bear that in mind as well. So this is just a bit of a before and after. Now the next shot here, I've put the sharpening right up to 150, uh, radius at 0 0.7, detail 8, okay? And I'm just going to toggle between these two to see if you can see the difference, okay? So the, the detail. So off, on, off, on. And hopefully you should see, even just looking at this little sample here, this is on, off, it's much blurrier, on, right? Now I've really pushed this quite hard. Um, I've taken the sharpening from 40 right up to 150, okay? So look at everything's a bit, it feels like things are soft and blurry here, even on a pixel shifted file, it's soft and blurry, right? But the whole point of a pixel shift file is that you can throw up this sharpening, throw up and push these values higher without getting too much noise going on, okay? That's the advantage. And a lot of people don't understand that with pixel shift, it's not just about shooting the camera pixel shift mode, it's about what you do after you've taken the shot with pixel shift okay let's have a look at the next image so this is uh side by side this is the, the sharpening at 150 again so the you know so the values here were 150 sharpening radius 0 0.7 in detail 8 so the same settings again now we're comparing the pixel shift to iso 100 versus the one that didn't have pixel shift so we've pushed the files the same and what we have here is, is it looks like oh yeah this hair here looks just as sharp as this one here and it, it kind of does in a way um but what happens is the bokeh starts to fall apart more there's more noise in the in the grain in the out of focus areas here is just far less now i don't know how well that is really coming through on a video that i'm trying to capture um and when it up, goes up to youtube but i'm going to place links to these files so you can inspect yourself and i can yeah do all that later on and you're welcome to obviously if you've got pentax you can test this yourself uh, to to see the same results now i mean a lot of people don't understand they go like it's a, it's a useless feature i don't know why they're bothered with it well you have to ask yourself did they go to all the hassle of implementing this feature for no reason for no benefit or is it that you've just not quite understood how it can be exploited fullest yet and I think that's the latter is most likely true. Um, so I've circled here, this, this out of focus areas look a little bit nastier. And down here, even here, where it's not out of focus, it's in focus, it's just grainier than here. This is this is nicer and cleaner with less grain. Okay, but again, we're going to quite extremes here, uh, 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 sharpness of 150. Okay, next image. Um, this is where it gets really interesting. So now we're looking at the, the 1600 ISO shots at minus five EV. So we're really pushing uh, what, what we can do with this. And so these two shots have had zero sharpening or noise reduction. So this is the difference between these two files natively. Huge difference, I think. Uh, you don't have to, <laughs> you know, really pixel peep at this point in time to see the difference between these two files. So the pixel shift one, much cleaner. All right, then that's it's non-pixel shift counterpart. Again, obviously I've I've, ex, I've adjusted the exposure. Um, I think it, I took it up to about plus four, plus 
four EV buys, I think, to get it to roughly about the same here. Um, the next shot. So this again is the this is the pixel shifted file, um, and we have um, what do we have? Yes. So I've applied a 100 sharpening. So I've taken it from 40 up to 100. Then I've done the radius 0 0.7 and the detail at 8. Okay. So this is what I'm trying to move this file to somewhere that I think is a little bit better than how it was to begin with, which is here. I've taken it to here now. Okay. And I put a bit of noise reduction in at 21 here as well. So remember, this was a 1600 ISO shot minus 5 EV to begin with. It's pr practically black. The whole image was practically black. And uh, we've got something worthwhile out of it. Um, and again, this is the comparison again. Um, so what I did here is I did the pixel shift shot. I created a virtual copy of it. And this one, I um, pushed the, the values uh, like I showed you before, and this is it natively without. So that's the difference. That's where I went from with the pixel shift shot. So the, these are both pixel sh shifted shots. I'm showing you this is how it started off with. And this is me trying to tidy it up a little bit whilst maintaining some sharpness. Okay, so maybe I did a bad job, but it's up, <laughs> it's up to you to decide. And this uh, next one um, just shows you the pixel shift versus the non-pixel shift version of it tidied up with both the same parameters. And that's the difference you see. So this is me, again, applying those values and trying to tidy up the noise. And yeah, and that's the difference between the two. All right, now, um, and then I've got the, the main files here as well that you can have a look at. Um, but I think, it, it, like I say, it just depends on on where you're coming from with it all. Plenty of lenses are sharp enough. They don't need extra sharpening for a lot of subject. You know, photography, digital, isn't all about resolution and pixels. It's about content, tones, colors, light, dark, um, subject matter, and all that kind of stuff. But there are some genres that I think, yeah, can benefit. Um, I might I might sometimes use pixel shift in landscape work, even in uh, waterfalls where, um, and we'll, we'll do that another day with the motion correction stuff, because that gets a little bit more tricky um, in terms of post-processing workflow. But uh, I, I might do it sometimes if I want sh a super sharp fern. <clears throat> the thing you have to realize is when you use pixel shift, it, it does take um, about a second to finish regardless of your shutter speed used because the K1, at least the, with the Pentax K1, I think it's faster with the KP, but the, the Pentax K1 is 4.4 frames per second maximum burst rate. So <clears throat> it's not just the processing and stitching time that it takes. That's separate. Just the actual taking of the shot can take a little bit long so you have to work out your environment and think is it a windy day or is it quite still because regardless even if i even if it's plentiful light and i can take these shots at one five thousandth of a second it's still going to take a second to complete the whole thing and if there's movement going on in around about a second then is it worth using because i'm just going to have to deal with mopping up those movements in a different program like raw therapy and things like that but some you'd be surprised you know some landscape stuff where there is movement in the trees, trees but far 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 away uh, it doesn't really look like there are any artifacts going on um so you can get away with it but you just have to work out whether you need you need it or not really um like i say i sometimes think of it as a as an hdr and help control noise i think that this image here that i'm just talking to now i think really goes to show you of minus five ev an ISO 1600, so and the exposure brought back up to something more normal, and the pixel shift is usable, whereas the non-pixel shift is just you know very, <coughs> very grainy. Look at this uh, green box in the background; it's very grainy. Um, and then it's non-pixel shift. Ver uh, sorry, the pixel shift version has uh, slightly cleaner. And again, remember both these files that you've seen here right now <coughs> haven't been adjusted for sharpening or noise. This is just a normal. Okay, so you can just see that sometimes, yeah, there's a big difference. It depends depends how you use it. All right, I think I'm rambling on now. I think that'll do. And we'll do another video another day with um, things like that, what, that have motion in them and what you do in that regard. But yeah, I would definitely use Pixel Shift for still life um, stuff. Products could be useful. Although I think a lot of product photography, you put in um, strobe work, so that doesn't really work because you can't do flashing <coughs> strobe work with Pixel Shift. Um, it won't flash a burst of flash between each frame even if you've got recycle times it wouldn't it doesn't work like that it just gives you one flash for the image <clears throat> so that's a bit of a down down uh, down or for that mode but um, if you're using natural light and uh, or continuous light for product photography yeah pixel shift can be really nice you get some very clean images out of it um or you might use it for things like landscape work where things aren't moving um maybe some architectural stuff um, can work really well. Buildings, nice clean lines and things like that. Yeah, I would 
definitely uh, get that mode working in, in those situations as well. All right, I hope that helps. All right, cheers, bye.